música e nós vamos estar clamando ao Senhor, pedindo comunhão, perdão dos pecados. Lord Jesus, we plead for the blood, for the power that's in your blood, Lord, putting our lives upon your altar, asking you, Lord, for forgiveness for our sins so that we can, in this morning, be attentive to your voice, Lord, and feel the touch of your Holy Spirit and so that you can, Lord, bring your angels down here to earth, Lord. We ask for a blessing, Lord, during the service while we listen to your teachings, Lord, so that it can come from eternity. This is the plea we make, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. The brethren may be seated. We're going to sing the song 37 at this time. We forget the world.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord Jesus, we glorify your name, Lord, for this night of rest that we had, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, to be gathered in your presence. Starting our day, receiving a blessing, Lord, from you. Thank you for the blessing in our, each and every one of our lives, Lord. We glorify your name for everything you've done for us, for the songs, Lord, for the praise, and for washing our lives, Lord, in your presence, Lord. We can feel your presence, Lord, in this place. And we are grateful, Lord, for everything that you've done for our lives, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to be able to be standing in your presence, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to come to your presence, come to your house, Lord, for us to receive your, your blessing, Lord. We are thankful, Lord, in the name of Jesus, amen. We're going to sing one more song, The Beauty of Your Holiness. Let, let us in this morning glorify the name of the Lord, because his presence is real. de uma, um ensino por uma professora do Brasil que estará dando uma aula para as crianças e logo após nós vamos ter a nossa escola bíblica. Nós crianças devem permanecer.
We greet the brethren and everyone who's visiting us with the peace of the Lord. In this month, the month of November, we're going to have a series of special classes. And today is the first special class that's going to talk about vigilance. We're going to be talking about the trumpets. We see that the first trumpet has already sounded and one third of the trees of the greenery was burned down. In the second trumpet, we see that the one third of the animals of the sea creatures in the sea also died. And in the tr third trumpet, we saw that the waters turned bitter. There was no longer any good water that we could drink. Today in the world, we only have 1% of water that we could drink straight from the fountains. But Jesus, he showed seven trumpets to John. And in the fourth trumpet, what would happen on the fourth trumpet? The fourth trumpet is the last trumpet that the church would be here for. The church is going to hear the fourth trumpet. Yes, the church will hear the fourth trumpet. And the church... But will the church live the consequences of the fourth trumpet? The answer is no. The church will not be here to live the consequences of the fourth trumpet. The last trumpet, when the last trumpet is sounded, those who died in Christ will be will meet with him in the clouds, and we will be when we will go to heaven with God. We're going to meet him in the clouds. Isn't this what we learned? So during this class, we're going to learn that in order for us to live this moment, the time of soon, we have to be vigilant. The disciples of Jesus, they asked Jesus, Jesus, when he was in the, the mountain of olives, they called Jesus in particular and they asked him, Jesus, what will be the signs that will point us to your coming back, to your return? And Jesus said, I'm going to tell you guys a parable. And do you know what a parable is? A parable is a way that Jesus, it's a story that he used to teach the disciples lessons. Jesus used this story in order to teach them so they could understand spiritual things that Jesus wanted to teach his disciples. So, Jesus, he talked about one specific parable about a wedding. Let us read the, te the text. Then the kingdom of heaven should be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in to him with the, went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Matthew twenty five ten. This story is very well known to the children. The children know this story. But we're going to talk today a little bit about the wedding. How was the wedding? Jesus talked about the wedding to the disciples because the disciples knew very well how weddings were back then. But we don't know how the weddings were. And today we're going to learn a little bit about that. The wedding was... The first thing you do when you do when you prepare for a wedding, the first thing you do is make a list of of guests, and you know who makes this list of guests? It's the father. The father prepares the list and he writes down who he wants to invite to the wedding. He writes down the names, and after everyone is written on the list. The son, he goes and invites everyone. <coughs> he goes and tells the people, look, you are invited to this wedding. I'm going to get married. This is my my bride. And we're going to get married in this place. It's going to be a grand festival. And you cannot miss it. You were invited because we love you a lot. And we really want you to be with us during this special moment. And afterwards, 
the the wedding wasn't in any any place. There was a specific person who would bring these people to the wedding. So the guests they were brought by a special person, a specific person. So the the king he would bring them to the wedding. And this is what happens to us as well. Jesus, he was teaching the disciples how God would do things. He's the one who put put us on the list. He's the one ever since eternity. He's the one who made the list and put us on this list. He's He elected us. He nominated us so that we could receive this blessing. His son, Jesus, he came to the earth and he spoke of the grand, grandest things and of the wonderful party that he would hold. He's the one who's going to bring us to the to the festival, to the grand feast. Now let me tell you one thing. When we make this list of guests for the wedding, some people are going to go up to you and say, listen, unfortunately I won't be able to attend. I have other things to do. I have a trip planned. I can't go because... Oh, I don't know. It's just not going to work out. It's going to be hard. A lot of people are going to make excuses. Jesus said this. He said there will be a lot of people who have excuses. He said a lot of people would be invited and a lot wouldn't be able to attend. A lot of people wouldn't have the carefulness in wanting to attend this wedding. And the father, he prepared clothing, special clothing for every person who would go to the wedding. And everyone who would attend this wedding, they would wear the special these special garments. When we go to parties, when we when we attend God's wedding, we're going to also receive these special garments. These garments are called garments of salvation. God is going to give us new clothing, new garments. He's going to make us new creatures. Before we had dirty garments, we had garments that weren't clean. And Jesus is going to come and clean our garments and give us new clothing. Garments of salvation. Jesus spoke of ten, ten women who were preparing for the wedding. And during this time, there was no electricity, and the wedding was going to be very dark. So they waited for the bridegroom to come. And do you think they stayed there waiting in the dark? I don't think anyone can see anything in the dark. We need light to see what is going on. And the word of the Lord says that the prudence, they had their candles lit and oil on the side, and extra oil. And why did they have this extra oil? Because in the, in the case that their candles would run out, they would be able to refill it. And what was the difference between the five prudence and the five imprudence? What was the difference? Why were they called prudent? They were called this because their candles were lit and they had extra oil on the side. But what is what is the significance of prudence? This means that they were thinking about what was going to happen. They were careful. They knew in their heads that they would need this oil later on, and so they had the extra oil on the side. The candle, the lamp, was only, only lasted for a little bit of time, so they needed extra oil to refill it later on. And they didn't know how long they would have to wait for the bridegroom, so they had to refill their lamp somehow.
and they refilled it with the oil, the extra oil that they had. So whenever their lamps were starting to dim, they would go and refill their lamps with oil. Okay. And, the, and the foolish woman, they didn't have the extra oil. They just had their lamps. And you know what the word says? The word says that this oil started to run out. And the light of their lamps were starting to get dim. And out of nowhere, while they were waiting, while they were waiting for the bridegroom, their lamps ran out. And at midnight, they heard that the bridegroom was arriving. At midnight, this tells us of a time with a lot of sin. It's the mo it's the darkest time of the night. And you know how bad this time of midnight is? If we're at home and out of nowhere, all the lights, the power went out. Have you ever seen this happening? If all the lights went out suddenly. And then you say, Mom, where are you? I'm alone. Because you're going and you're going to be scared because it's so dark outside that you can't see anything. And then everything, everything is dark, and all of a sudden someone rings the doorbell. Are you going to go and run to answer the door? No, you're going to be scared. If you can't see who is outside, are you going to open the door? No, because you can't see anything. And why can't you see anything? Because it's dark. When someone arrives to our house, we look at we look outside first and see who it is first before we open our house, before we open our doors to them. When it was midnight, the ten women, they heard the bridegroom arriving. And they heard a cry saying that the bridegroom was arriving. And you know what happened when they heard this cry? They went to go meet him. However, only those whose lamps were lit went to his encounter, went to go meet the bridegroom. Look, these are the, these are the women who had their candles lit and went to meet the bridegroom when he arrived at the, at the feast. And after all of the ones who had their candles lit went and went through the doors, the doors were shut. I can no longer see them because they are through these doors. When they heard this cry, and the foolish ones who didn't have their lamps lit, when they heard the cry of the bridegroom, they couldn't go meet him. They asked for they asked the other ones, the ones who were wise, for their extra oil. But they said, I can't give this to you because it's only enough for me. The, the oil isn't mine. It's the blessing of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And the only one who can give us this is Jesus Christ. He's the one who sent the Holy Spirit to us. He's the one who fills our lamps. And our lamps have to be full in order for us to be ready when Jesus comes back. And could they have gone out and, buy and bought more oil? They could have, but they didn't. Why? Because they, because they were inconsequent. They, for example, they, when you have a test the next day and you don't study for the test, what are you going to do? You're, you, you're going to get a bad grade on the test. So if you don't study for this test, you get there the next day and you're going to do bad on the test. You're not prepared. It's in, similarly, the, the foolish woman who didn't have their lamps ready, they couldn't go out and meet the bridegroom because they weren't prepared. Let's see what happened to these foolish women. When they got, 
when they when the bridegroom arrived instead of them going to meet the bridegroom they went to go get more oil they went on the opposite direction do you think there would have been time for them to get more oil and then go and meet the bridegroom there was no time when he arrived they went in the opposite direction and there wasn't even any oil in the direction they were going at. And when they came back to meet the bridegroom, the door was closed. And after the door closes, there's no way to open it again. And they knocked on the door and they pounded on the door, but there was no hope. They didn't find any oil. When someone, when someone knocks on the doors of our house and it's dark and we don't know who it is, do we let them in? No, we do not let them in. The word of the Lord says that it's going to be like this. He's not going to let us come in if we don't have our lamps lit. The person who's holding the party is going to say, I don't recognize you. I don't know who you are. He's going to say, you guys aren't even prepared to come into the feast. And this is very sad, don't you think? This is why we have to be prepared. We have to be prepared so when Jesus comes back, we can go into the feast with him, into the party with him. We have to have, we have to be just like the wise woman with our lamp slit and with oil, when, with extra oil on our side. We are, we are living a time that we have to be vigilant. We have to be attentive to the time we are living, the time of soon. And you might be asking, what can I do to fill up my to fill up my vessel with more oil? When we go to church, the Lord speaks throughout his message, throughout songs. He speaks through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes we see the kids and the adolescents who aren't even listening to what the pastor is saying. The message is for you. When we go to church, the message that the pastor is saying is for everyone. And you know what the word says? It says to hold his word in our hearts so I will not sin against you. When we hold the message in, in our hearts, when we hold his word, whenever I hear, whenever you hear a gift, hold it in your heart and this will make you stronger. And then you're going to start living more experiences with the Lord. When you ask the Lord to speak to you, he will speak to you. When you pray, he will answer. When, I, when you pray for someone, for your parents or for your dad to come to church, he will come. When you pray for other people, they will receive a blessing. You know why? Because the kids, the adolescents, the intermediates are starting to participate in the service. When they fear the Lord and when they listen to the message and hold this in their hearts, this is how we are going to be filled with the Holy Spirit and have more experiences. This is how we prepare ourselves. So when Jesus comes, we will be prepared. We will be ready for his return. It's time for us to be vigilant. It's time for us to be attentive. So how is your lamp? lamp? Is it lit? I'm asking right now, how is your lamp? How is my lamp looking? Lord, my lamp, it's not very full. Sometimes I go to church and I don't even listen to what the pastor is saying. And did you know that the service is something that's very important? It's the house of the Lord. It's a place where you of prayer. It's a place with fellowship with the Lord. So when you guys aren't paying attention, you lose the blessing that you could potentially receive. When we go to the house of the Lord, it's for us to offer our lives to the Lord. It's to offer our glorification, our praise. Because it's not good to live in darkness. The world is in darkness. The world is in sadness. And when 
people see these signs, see these trumpets, they don't know what's going on. They don't know what's happening. The world doesn't know what is going on with the church right now. They don't hear the sound of the trumpets because they are in darkness. But when we are in church, we, are, we see the light, we see the revelation of the Lord. If your house, if the power went out in your house, when all of a sudden the light come back, comes back on, you're going to be very happy. You can see your parents. We can see everything. And it was in the same manner when the disciples asked the Lord, Lord, what is going to happen? And God told him, Jesus told them everything. He told them everything that was in the Word. Because when we read the Word, we know what's going to happen in the future. And they said, what a blessing. We're going to encounter our bridegroom. We're going to see him again. He's preparing right now a wonderful place for us to live. We are, we are very happy people because we are in the presence of the Lord. We don't serve the Lord because we are scared, because of fear. No, we live in His presence because we love Him and we are anxious for His arrival. And we have to be prepared. The, the foolish woman who didn't have their lamps lit, they wanted to participate to, with the party. They wanted to be there, but they couldn't because their lamps weren't lit and they couldn't recognize who they were. I have to be I have to be watching my own lamp. I have to be making sure that it is always lit and that I have the extra oil in my vessel. We have to be vigilant. We have to be preparing ourselves. We have to serve the Lord because we he is amazing and because he is great, not because we are scared. And the Lord wants to bless your family, wants to bless your home, he wants to bless your life. We are chosen people. We are chosen from the Lord. We are His chosen people. And we have to accept this calling. We have to accept Him calling us and value His blessing in our lives. So let us hold this word in our hearts and always remember to be prepared. Amen?
Glória a Deus. Vamos receber agora a transmissão. Now let's receive the Sunday school teaching transmission. Maranatha Christian Church is connected and the Holy Spirit is giving instructions in the whole world. It's the, the Word of God, living Word of God. Brethren from all parts of the earth participate on the same service in one spirit, in one accord. Through the system, the members of the Maranatha Christian Church in the whole world, they are living in the moment of unity and fellowship as the Hebrews when they left Egypt and the disciples before his death at the Calvary. People from all over the world are being reached out by the gospel and the message of the second come of Jesus. We greet all the churches connected to us this morning through the satellite system with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Sunday school teaching transmitted from Manahim of the Spirit of Santo in the city of Domingos Martins, where we are participating on the first period and the beginners. All the Manahims are being participating with us. And we have some information about the, what the Lord is transmitting us. And especially with the work abroad, Hungary, the East Europe, many, many churches are being assisted as a result of the work of the Holy Spirit in the, in the, the work abroad. We had a baptism in Venezuela, eight servants Eight people were baptized. As we can see the continuous growth in Portugal, district of Lisbon, the city of Mafra. Also the Amazon mission, the eighth mission. Many, many experiences from the people are being reached out from assistance, uh, odontological assistance, medical assistance, many, many works and uh, good deeds. Uh, and people are being assisted and last Saturday we had a baptism and a supper with the Lord where everybody could assist seminar through the satellite. Following the seminar now we have several churches, Cacoal, Rondônia, Maringá in the state of Paraná, Ananindewa, Pará, 
Itabatã, Bahia, Rio dos Ossos, Rio de Janeiro, São Bernardo do Campo, São Paulo. Many, many other events. Vídeo with the ladies in Alegre, Espírito Santo. Also, the teaching of language, science. Also, the, the appendix and form, uh, formation for, for the musicians, for the new musicians. Guanyan is also uh, evangelization. At the same time, a vigil with the youth in Barra Mansa, Rio de Janeiro. A serenade and evangelization in Linhares, Espírito Santo. As well, an evangelization in Porto Alegre, Rio Grande do Sul, Queimados, Rio de Janeiro, São Gonçalo, Rio de Janeiro, Baptism, in Vila Velha, Espírito Santo, also Manahim of Governador Valdares, Piabetá, Rio de Janeiro, Baptism, Baptism in São José, Santa Catarina, Suzinho, Bahia, Salvation, this is a result of the salvation of people. It's a result of the work and the prayers of the church. We greet also people from Coqueral, Vila Velha. They are participating in our Sunday school this morning. Rosario de Oeste, Mato Grosso. This church always follow through the satellite and the service during the week. Also Cachoeira de Tapimirim, they are receiving the Sunday school. That is from last week. People from Assembly of God participating with us. We greet them as well. Now continuing our Sunday school, Pastor Shadow Chiu do some introduction for our teaching. Well, brethren, and peace of the Lord. First of all, I'd like to say that we have here as a guest many groups, people from Conceição de Capim, Aimorés, Minas Gerais, a group of 23 people inside the Manahim today. This for us, it's a reason of great joy. because those are very small cities, small town, and we see that the Holy Spirit is blessing and they are following the gospel. We are rejoicing with them. Some are in the other amphitheater. Those that, are, that were presented, I would like to ask them, pastors present from Cuba, I'd like to have them introducing, introducing them and translating for them. Pastor Dennis from Cuba. Dennis Cordova. And his wife Judith. Today we have a great blessing to have them here with us. Two churches. And some from Havana, from another city, they can be seated. We can see a miracle also in Venezuela. There is people alive when we see the baptism. I received here a contribution someone sent from Pompano Beach, United States, the pastor sent, so I would like to mention here the work that he done, a very interesting note about the Sunday school, about the last Sunday school. We have received several contributions from Brazil and the work abroad. Last Sunday, I mentioned 
about the brethren in a city from Bahia. The pastor wrote saying that he would like to be mentioned the study, so we sent so they can have their homework. So the, the, su the subject will be about the parable of the supper or the feast, the wedding in Matthew 22. So the ones that were invited for this wedding. The parable of the ten brides. So everyone that participated, they are in, they have all the, the, the resources to participate. The parable of the wedding. Our, uh, the concern of Jesus to prevent, to give a heads up to the church and to show the performance of the project of salvation how God <coughs> transmitted this desire and the way that he addressed. It's very important to understand that the word of God is it's a living God, living word. And we can understand that as the Holy Spirit is here with us, the word of God is alive. And it's very important. It's permanent. And it's at our hand, we can count on it for the project of salvation. The Lord Jesus, through the parables, and we can see that through the parables, the majority of them, it's referring to the time of the end. So he is there back 2,000 years ago. The prophecy points to the time that we are living in. So last week we studied about the, the wedding, the parable of the wedding, the invitation. So we have five brides which were prudent and two like a fool, the other five. So the position of the church the importance to be ready, dressed accordingly, and to have their lamps filled and lit. So the second one talks about a man that entered in the wedding without the proper garments. Garments. So the difference is that in this parable, it refers to a, an invitation uh, generally to everyone in any time, any period of time. But at the same time, he shows that the invitation is being done to a people that has no commitment and is not caring for the moment that him, Jesus, is addressing to the church. And the first subject says invite the servant so the invitation is not for the world it's for the servants for the believers that are falling in to the work of the Holy Spirit whoever was not a servant and tried to enter in the wedding he was excluded were the ones that didn't have the the proper garments for the weddings. So we we are going to study some important aspects. First, we I'll, I'll ask. I'm not sure, but about the the pastor that was giving uh, another seminar. So he, he might not be adjusted for this first question. And I'd like to make this question. Reading the parable of the weddings in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22. So, let's see 
some important verses, especially the 14th, from 1st to the, the 14th. So the ones that had a chance to read and study, So whoever had a chance to read, you can give a signal. That was the homework from last week. So you can... I'm not going to ask whoever didn't read. Some people are afraid to answer. So the ones that read and also the ones that didn't read, let's read together. And the first question will be, reading the parable of the wedding, Make a shortcut in two words. So, what is the the main subject that we can take in two words? Two words to explain this parable. And then Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parable said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding. And they were not willing to come. Again, he sent out all the servants saying, Tell those who were invited, See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatted cattle are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of, of it and went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his business, and the rest seized his servants, treat them and speedfully, and kill them. But when the king heard about it, he was furious, and he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned, them, burned up them, their city. And then he said to the servants, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore go into the highways, and as many as you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both bad and good. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But then, when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man that were, who did not have on a wedding garment. So he said to, to him, Friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There will be whipping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Two, <laughs> two words to, to make it short. The theme for this parable. It's about to <laughs> find out in a blind way. The blindfold way. How are you going to say it? First, it's an invitation. This parable talks about invitation and rejection. There was an invitation and also the rejection. Now let's see the second question. So the parable is about invitation and rejection. When you open the Bible, 
if you wanted to know what is there for your life, sometimes you can understand a text and you can do an interpretation. There's, a, there's moments that the interpretation doesn't work. You need to go deeper to reach the soul. This is called revelation. Whatever you're looking for, when you're looking for, when you're reading, this is in the New Testament or this is in the Old Testament. So the other thing is, the subject is related to what? To Israel, to the church, or to the Gentiles. So everything has a direction. Another thing, you know, if in that there is a where where uh, where is the the history and where is the prophecy <coughs> so the whole bible shows the historic uh, facet and the prophetic facet also in this analysis you're going to find an operation and where is the trinity operating in this situation who is in the first place. Where is the emphasis? Is it the Father? Is it the Son? Or is it the Holy Spirit? The emphasis here is where? Father, Son, or Holy Spirit in this parable? The emphasis is about the Father, but he also put who in the project? Promptly. The feast, the wedding is being given by the Father. But to who? To whom? To the Son, the figure of Jesus. Where is the Holy Spirit is in this parable? Uh, it's shown in the word servants. The one that goes after, the, the invites. So, see, the Holy Spirit has a role. Are you seeing the revelation? So, you want to have an understanding. You have to go in that direction. There is many other aspects, but we're not going to bring now because this is not the subject. So, coming back to the main subjects, invitation and rejection. The invitation is done by the Father and the rejection is from man. Now let's go to the other questions. How many times you can find expression related to the invitation in this text? Look overall quickly and let's see. How many times? Say the number. Three. Somebody else says more. Something else. Oh, someone found uh, another one. So the invitation is mentioned four times. Verse 3, verse 8, and verse 10. 2, 3, 8, and 10. So that is the relation, the correlation about the invitation. What we can observe here. The main concern, the main concern about the one that is making the feast, the preparing the wedding, his main focus is in the invitation. It's an order. Is it a, a request? No, it's an invitation. This is important to know. It's not mandatory. Our God, He never obligates us to anything. When He uses the word mandatory. He's not saying to everyone but for the servants. And his desire is that the other people attend and understand that he's not forcing anyone. He had a wedding, he has a feast, and he's inviting. Another question. In the parable of the weddings, 
what was the motive for the invitation? He is making a joke about the white, what was the color of the white horse of Napoleon? It's something almost, almost obvious. So I, I believe no one will answer that wrong. The importance is to have the main subject very firm, very clear. What was the motive? It was a feast of what? A wedding of his son. It was not only a celebration, but it was a celebration of the wedding, the marriage of his son. When you read, when you read the text, you see how many times it repeats because of what? It could say one time, but it's saying many times, four times. It's like reinforcing it. Do you understand? Is that clear? I'm insisting. So he, then he repeats. So how many times? How many times? Four times. Don't look at me, look at the Bible. So how many times? Four times. Four or five. So it's five times. Five talks about a project, project of salvation, evangelization, a ministry. It talks about the correlation with the ministry. It's the church in, in all the actions. It's very simple, right? Next question. Pastor Brazil. There's some appealing. Uh, uh, what was the appealing made by the, the father, the one that made the wedding and invited? I'll give you some time to work with it. What was the appealing made by the head of the ho household that invited for the wedding of his son? When you say to someone, when you invite, you, you invite and you say, you come for that, that and that reason. So how many or what was the please? What was the reasons? So how many? So who found the first one? The dinner is ready. Does the pastor need to look for something different to preach? The widow of nine or the ten leprous? So what all he needs is to preach about the dinner. The dinner is ready. What is the message? He's going to say that the project of God is ready. You don't need to improvise. The eternity has prepared everything for the humankind. The project is ready. Project of salvation. Many, many understood and gave glory to God because they understand what is inside the project. It's prophetic. Are you understanding? The Sunday school teaching is not to lick the finger to pass page over page. There's no such a thing. This is to deceive, to elude people. But what we're doing is more profound. 
So the Sunday school teaching is very important for that. It's a good moment to study. And what God wants for his people is in his word. The dinner is ready. The second The oxen died already, were killed. You can read. My oxen and fetter cattle are killed. And he repeats, come. And all things are ready. Come to the wedding. Do not be afraid. Be of a good effort, good effort, and come. There is a concern. So when you say that related to the mankind, to the people, of what you have as a tradition of your family or anything, it's different. But when it talks about God and His project, the the way that He insists, there is a prophetic reason for everything is ready. Don't you believe in me? Everything is ready. It's uh, an insistence from the Holy Spirit. Next. With everything ready, what was the reaction or the excuses for the one that we invited and they rejected? to list the excuses and the reactions for the ones that denied the invitation. Verse 3. They were not willing to come. Do you want to accept Jesus as a Savior? No. You are dying, about to die, at the hospital, finals, final moments, terminal, and someone asks, do you accept Jesus? No. It's a man in his position, in its position, the humankind. Presumption, arrogance. So let's go for the second. The second way that they answered. Chapter 22, verse 5. And they made light of and they went their ways. So sometimes people question, does Jesus do that? God, for what? So this is the way that some people of the world answered. See how Bible and all the concern from God, when you go deeper in the revelation, you're going to see how God can see us, the mankind, and how He addresses and how the mankind responds or reacts. Braden, look at here. This parable talks about our time. And why is related to our time? What is the meaning? You read the parable? So why you understand that this is related to our time, period? Then we ask at the beginning, how many did you see the word that or that, A and B? Because of the moment, the rapture of the church. What Jesus says about the rapture of the church, the church will be received with the feast, with the wedding. And this is the, the, the feast that is being prepared and the, the church knows very well 
This is fundamental. So how many times the word wedding? It looks like a very naive question. But it's too fixed in, in our minds. So everybody can understand how is the project among us. What people think and what God has put before man to help man. And God gave to men the intelligence and the capability to answer properly. Let's see the other one about rejection. So, verse 5. In the past, they didn't have industry, technologies. What they had was a field, the society, and most of was were, uh, were like agro-pastoral. So you plant and you create animals. The business were related to the field, to the nature. So there was the one that planted the one that sold, sell the, 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 the fruits and the produce and the oil, the wine, the flour. So that, that was the way the people survived on. So the argument, if back then, if they talk about something related to our time frame so people have to be prepared naturally for survival and some people sometimes you're so worried about the survival that you forget the spiritual but what God wants for men He doesn't want people to be totally out of, alienated from the prophetic. God wants the best for us. But the, the Bible says, if your richness grow, do not put your heart in them. Or do not put them in your heart. If I cannot go to the temple and to the service to serve God, but if I bought a car and I need to wash this car at that moment, and now I'm so rich that I'm not going to take care of the things of the Lord because I have money to go to the hotels, vacationing, that's okay. There's no problem, but there's something inter interesting. God does not take away what he, he has given. There is a text that talks about a servant, a faithful servant that came to... So the word was, friend, I do not own you anything. Take whatever is yours and go away. God does not care about what He gave you. You have received blessings. So if you want to go, it's up to you. It's yours. But it's not a good thing. Prophetically, that talks about the exclusion. The project that when they were called, it's very important and very noble. So it requires a prudence and we need to care about it. So it's very important to know what it's related to the church for our moment. If there was another world that will start, it's not my world because I, I don't want to be determined for anything. 
Uh, what I want to be paying attention is what the Bible says. And the whole Bible, all the prophecies are fulfilled. So the one, one, once he said to the disciple, you have seen the temple, the great construction, you will not stay stone on top of stone. So in the year 70, Titus, and he came and he took the city and he destroyed everything. They destroyed the city looking for treasures. Therefore, your house will be desertic. See, 2,000 years. These people who live as... Manure. As the, the, the death, the, the dead people will be like manure on the streets. So the prophecy is like that. And you understand only when you say, Blessed is the one that comes in the name of the Lord. So the prophecy fulfills. It doesn't fulfill for whoever doesn't care. It will, that will be the judgment. But the work of the Holy Spirit the role of the work of the Holy Spirit is to bring to memory all the projects and all the fulfillments, ex exceptional things, supernatural things. The word is here. Let's spread the word. Let's announce that Jesus is at the door. This is our role. We were called for that. To say, Maranatha, Jesus will come. Do you want? No. That's okay. That is the difference between invitation and rejection. The word is here. Nobody can have any doubt about the, the history or the story. The aspect is very large. It's like a stairway that, that goes in his time. His time is prophetic. Thousand years ago, three thousand years ago, it fulfills in an incredible speed. It fulfills now, sometimes. The revelation was there at the beginning of the history of the church. Now it's fulfilling now and at the same speed. I don't want to confuse you and I don't want to enter in that subject because this is not related to what we're doing to today. Some people understood, but let's leave it like that. Another question? The last question. How many judgments for the ones that are at the wedding with uh, improper garments? So he found the, the king, the, the head of the household. In the religion, you can be a good man, a man of a good deed, but in the feast of the Lord, in the wedding, only the ones that understand and have the garment of salvation. At the weddings of the ten, uh, brides, same thing. Who gives the, 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 the garments is the father. So there's no way to push, to force. It doesn't matter if you yell, shout. After the door is closed, it's the door of the grace. When it, it closes, there's no way. We need to leave this legacy for our kids because I don't know when Jesus will come. Even he don't know. Only the Father. So Israel took many, many years to say that the Messiah will come. The, the, 
the history of Jesus is not a like a abruptly history. Uh, a son have born, his name will be Emmanuel. No, the history of Jesus is the it was like prof prophesied since the, the first day of existence of the creation. Jesus was there. The death of the, the firstborn, the lamb, the blood at the door, bread does not exist improvisation in the project of God. The Old Testament it comes and he shows and he points for the New Testament. There's no fractions of the Word of God. You take a text and he's a history. So that story is finished, has finished. What happens is when you, sometimes when you find a revelation, it points to revelation or to, or to another book way ahead. When Jesus says, the sun will darken the moon as well. So how many years before or after the creation or before the second coming of Jesus? So 4,000 years. So f Jesus was 4,000 years from the creation. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 it will say when he created the sun, the moon and the stars, he made for a period of time that was determined, which is the, our time, to illuminate, but as a sign back then, and that will serve as a prophetic sign. So the signs now are showing the purpose in Revelation when it says the sun will lose its lust and the brightness. So this is the beauty of the Revelation. But if you take one text only, the history is good, everybody has to read, everybody should know, but the beauty is when you see the completion or the complete project. When you take one text only, do not eat that, do not eat this, you can establish a religion, a church, you can start a church based on one text, but that's not what God wants for us. So the Bible opens the project of God. And he wants to reveal his project. It's not something that you open and one text shows everything now. So neither me or any religion is the owner of this. This belongs to the Holy Spirit. And whoever is connected will find out the treasure. We are on top of the hour for to finish for the breakfast. I'm not worried because I don't, I don't care. So, what are the judgment for the ones that are at the wedding and they are not dressed accordingly? So, Matthew 22, 13. So then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There is a judgment. Do you don't want the judgment? That's totally acceptable. But the judgment is there. Nothing will be out of the God's project. He created everything. He don't like it, he'll throw it away. He created for his glory. It doesn't, he's not making the, its purpose, so he will destroy it. So send the armies to destroy the city. What, what God is saying? Send the army to destroy them. What is the revelation behind that? Destroy the city. Is this is it. What, what else does the text says? Human organization slash religion 
It has no value. Jerusalem is the city, the chosen city, chosen for, by God for service, to service Him or to praise Him. Why did Jerusalem was destroyed, were destroyed two times? Because the, the, the main purpose was to adore His name. And the people deviate from this purpose. They didn't care about God's project. So God says, why Jerusalem is important as is not making my purpose. He doesn't want. So what was the, what is the reason? What's the purpose? Why God wants a city if the city, if the people that live in the city is not fulfilling the purpose? I'm not saying that religion is not good. But I'm saying what God is saying. The way that God is saying, is seeing religion without God's purpose, it has no worthy. It has no value. Whoever believes is being saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. No, it is already condemned because the judgment is already established. See, brethren, there's many, many things to be seen, to be said, and to be studied. Let's close now saying to all the churches and all the people of God, next Sunday we will continue our Sunday school teaching. We're going to make more correlation and studies and teaching, teachings, and you are welcome to send your collaboration. It's very welcoming. And I want to say, I didn't have a chance to read because I did not have a chance. It was very rushed this week. I didn't have time. But I wish that I can, with the proper time, I can read and give answer to all of them. And the ones that will be sending something this week. And remembering that we are being prepared for the special day 24th of November when we will have uh, a purpose. There is a, an alert for our people or for the ones that we like to invite. What does the, the Bible says? Whoever has ears, hear it. We don't want to force anybody. But the text talks exactly about that. The other passage says, and the bad man will not enter. The Lord is determined for people that is invited, lived, knows everything, but is rejecting. So the, the word of God for them is, the bad man will not enter in my wedding. Let's stand and I'd like to give an announcement, the passing of our friend and pastor, Itamar Coelho, known from many, many people. The funeral service happened, took place on last Thursday. The family is being assisted. Accordingly, we are sad because we will miss our brother, but we know God has its time, has his time and his purposes. How old was he? 78 years old. So our word to the family and to the, the beloved and the church that he had a chance to minister, to minister. we have uh, a word of care. We send our regards. Lord, we bless your name. And in your name we say, May the grace of our Jesus, the love of eternal Father, the sweet consolations of the Holy Spirit, can pour out upon you, the whole people of God, today and forever. Amen. The church is dismissed. If you want to sing a song. Amen. Let's sing a song as well. The children will be participating.
Amen. Let's stand, brethren. The children, intermediate, adolescents will be kneeling so we can pray for them. Let's pray for them. Pastor Sabbath. Lord, we ask for the grace which is in the blood of Jesus. We ask blessings upon the children, intermediate adolescents, so we can preserve them, keep them, give them health, intelligence, bless their houses, their families. Lord, we bless your name for this morning in your presence, for the teaching, for the word, for your word, and the teachings that will be set in our hearts. Give us a day of blessing so we can evangelize, invite, give us boldness so we can throw the seed, so tonight we can see salvation, transformation, so we can have a feast in your presence. Take us in peace. In the name of Jesus, amen. And in your name we say, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of Father, the eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit can be brought upon all of us, now and forever, amen. The church may be seated. Our tonight's service, 7.30, let's be praying for the service. So we can see salvation taking place. We would like to remind everyone that our seminar is, uh, the registrations are opened. I'm checking. So if you want, if you want help to do your registration, call us, the workers, the deacons, the the chief of the assistance groups. So I see very few from Pompano. Please do not wait for the last moment so we don't be without places there. Anything else? We are preparing ourselves for the 24th, the special day, Saturday, next Saturday. So this week we will have our s service with supper until uh, Thursday we're gonna announce so we're gonna finish the month of October the service uh, the month of dedication we're gonna have a special service to celebrate that so the Lord can bless us so we're gonna have this defined until Thursday amen to all peace of the Lord